In this video, I'll be showing a slightly challenging uh, implant procedure uh, where we'll be removing this upper second molar tooth. The root canal was done on it and it failed. Uh, so after extraction of this tooth, I'll be doing a sinus lift, uh, a crystal sinus lift with a ostem casket, uh, placing bone graft uh, under the sinus floor, uh, placing an immediate ostem TS3 implant and with the help of PRF, I'll be making sticky bone and placing it around this dental implant. After that, we place a collagen membrane on top and suture uh, everything together. So here I'm using a 15 number uh, BP blade, uh, giving a circular incision around the molar tooth. And uh, using a periosteal elevator, I'll be raising a mucoperiosteal flap uh, around the second molar tooth. It is very important that when we are using this periosteal elevator, we have to be very careful that we do not tear the uh, flap. Uh, otherwise, the blood supply uh, to this uh, area and to this implant will be totally compromised. That's why we try and avoid giving any uh, vertical release incisions or cuts on the gingiva. Now I'm using a straight uh, slow speed handpiece and dividing this uh, tooth in three parts. The trick here is that the tooth has to be separated buccally into the mesobuccal root and the distobuccal root and a separate palatal root. Implants, it is very important to get the teeth out cleanly. That's why we have to make sure that uh, the cut that we make goes through down to the furcation. Here we can see that uh, the three roots have been uh, removed atraumatically and separately. After that, cure it out the uh, socket. To place the dental implant, it is very important to drill exactly in the interdental, so, uh, interdental bone with lot of irrigation. And uh, after this, I am using the next drill. Uh, for placing the implant again in the interdental bone and then I use the casket drills for sinus lift. This is cr for the crestal sinus lift and then we open a 5 millimeter wide ostem TS3 implant and here you will see that I have got uh, more than 45 NCM stability. As you can see the buccal uh, bone is lost in this case that's why we had uh, raised up the uh, buccal flap fully uh, otherwise raising the buccal flap is not necessary uh, and is better if not raised in uh, immediate uh, molar cases so here we are we took uh, PRF uh, we made PRF by taking the patient's blood cut it horizontally into pieces and made something called a sticky bone using uh, APRF and IPRF. So what sticky bone does is it improves the handling characteristics of this bone. So after the dental implant uh, is over and the sinus lift procedure is over and done with, we can place this around the implant and create a new buccal bone. This will be covered with a collagen membrane and on top of that a PRF membrane and the entire buccal flap is sutured over it. After that, a separate procedure will be required for the keratinized tissue on the buccal side.